very much. Thank you very much to the organizers for this nice uh, school and conference. I really enjoyed uh, my stay here. So my talk uh, will be uh, related, of course, to the lectures of Sergei Kuksin and the talk of Armen. Uh, so uh, we will see how this controllability approach uh, can be uh, applied to uh, prove ergodicity for equations in unbounded domains. So um, in unbounded domains, uh, usually uh, you have two types of problems. So uh, first of all, uh, the operator, the Stokes operator, uh, the spectrum of the operator will not be uh, discrete. Uh, and uh, so we will see that uh, this controllability approach applied in a suitable way do, does not see at all how, how looks the spectrum. Okay? If uh, the equation is uh, controllable in the suitable sense, then no matter how looks the spectrum of the operator. Then there are also uh, a lot of problems coming from the lack of compactness in the system. Okay, where, where you are working on unbounded domains, so the Sobolev uh, inclusions are no more compact. And so, uh, in fact, uh, we are going to replace these compactness properties by other compactness coming directly from the equation. Okay, some compactness induced by the equation will replace compactness coming from Sobolev uh, spaces. Okay? So, uh, I will start by a short introduction. Uh, So we we'll study uh, the classical uh, Navier-Stock system. So the viscosity will not play any role, so I take it equal to one. So uh, we are in the uh, incompressible setting. And to fix the ideas, uh, we will consider directly boundary conditions, but any reasonable condition will do. Zero equals to zero. So uh, we consider uh, so the space variable in a domain D, which will be unbounded. Uh, so uh, we, we will not be able to work in any unbounded domain. Uh, so, uh, in fact, we will assume that uh, D is an unbounded domain. Of Poincaré type. which means exactly the following, that uh, the classical Poincaré inequality is satisfied on this domain. For any smooth, comp compactly uh, supported uh, field. It is bounded in one direction, so it can. Uh, so, uh, if, uh, so it is in two dimension. You can take uh, a strip. You can take a strip. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, in fact, what I need from the equation is the dissipativity. So I take Poincaré inequality. So I assume that on the domain, the Poincaré inequality is satisfied in order to have dissipativity in the equation. Okay? As soon as the, the system is dissipative, it will work. So I don't know if uh, for your setting, uh, Navier-Stokes is uh, dissipative or not, but uh, it is to be checked. So in any sense, in any case, 
uh, it is not this, this condition which is important, but the property of dissipativity. Okay, so there is a lambda such that this inequality holds for any, uh, for any uh, V, for any V in this space. space. So, Poincar so we assume this condition since Poincaré implies dissipativity of the Navier-Stokes system. So, which means uh, exactly the following, that uh, the solution satisfies the following inequality, minus lambda t u0 squared plus lambda minus 1 eta squared L2 uh, 0 t h minus 1 d. Okay, so this dissipativity uh, is uh, crucial for us because um, without this dissipativity, the energy can go to infinity without creating even stationary measure. So even to have a stationary measure, we need dissipativity property. Okay, uh, so uh, in fact, we can work in arbitrary d domain D in R2, even for R2, provided that there is a damping in the equation. Uh, for example, dumping term of the form alpha u with alpha which is strictly positive. Okay. Uh, so in this situation, we will have uh, dissipativity in the equation no matter how, uh, how looks the domain. Okay. So, so what are the assumptions about the noise? So... Uh, the form of the noise will be exactly the same as uh, in the lectures of Sergei Kuksin uh, and talk of Armen. So it is of the following form. So you have characteristic function of the interval uh, k, mi k minus 1 k. Then you have these random perturbations. And about these perturbations, we assume the following, eta k are independent, identically distributed random variables. In the space, L2, 0, 1, with values h. And H is the classical Navier-Stokes space, which is the closure of uh, smooth vector fields that are divergence-free. So the main result is the following. So assume that these perturbations are, yes, In, with respect to L2 norm, with respect to L2 norm, thank you. The usual L2 norm, okay. So the main result is the following, so assume that
that eta k are decomposable. which means uh, the following is that they are of the form eta k equals to infinite sum over j from, so of bj, pj, k, pj, where where EJ is an orthonormal basis in L two zero one H, so it is a space time uh, basis. Uh, BJ are positive numbers with They're square summable. So all of them are non-zero. So we are working in the non-degenerate setting. Okay, the goal of this uh, work is to understand what happens, uh, uh, what we need to do in unbounded domains. This is the difficulty that I would like to understand here. Of course, a degenerate version of this also can be uh, regarded. Okay. So next. Uh, so all this is deterministic. All the randomness comes from the coefficients uh, xi, jk. So xi, jk are independent, identically distributed random variables. In R that are bounded which means by one, for example, and whose law is uh, absolutely continuous with respect to the Lebesgue measure on real line. This density is uh, C1 smooth and positive at zero. So it is exactly what we saw uh, uh, yesterday and uh, the beginning of the week. So, okay. So under this decomposability and non-degeneracy uh, assumption, we have exponential mixing. So uh, uh, then the NS system is exponentially exponentially mixing which means exactly the following there is a unique stationary measure if okay this is a probability measure over this Navier-Stokes space H. And for any compact set H in this space, there are numbers numbers C, C positive such that the law of the solution at integer times converges to this uh, stationary measure with respect to the dual Lipschitz norm that we saw several times. So it is C exponential minus C K for any K and the initial condition u0 will be in this compact. Okay, so we have a, a uniform exponential convergence for initial data given in this compact. 
So this is the main result that we, uh, we are going to prove using this controllability approach. So, uh, uh, of, course, of course, this is based uh, on uh, the previous uh, works uh, of Armen uh, and our joint work with, with Sergei Uksin and Armen Shirikan. So, uh, so, we, uh, so the references here would be, so, so his works of 2011 so, and 2017, where he uh, used controllability approach to study ergodicity of degenerate noise, but degenerate in the space, which means that the noise was supported in his works in a given subdomain of the main domain or on a piece of the boundary. And then with, with uh, Sergei Kuksin, and uh, Shirikan, we generalize this approach so in two papers. To, to study uh, degenerate noise, but in in Fourier spectrum. Okay, uh, so uh, in uh, so in the literature uh, uh, there are uh, only few works uh, in unbounded domains for related equations. So it is it is the works uh, of uh, Bartin and Hanin and Hanin. So, uh, where they, they consider uh, the Burgers equation on the real line. So, they prove exponential mixing uh, for, for this equation, uh, but their proof uh, uh, does not work for this more generic type of equations like Navier Stokes Ginzburg Landau. They use very, in a very critical way the special features coming from Burger's equation. Okay? But uh, I need to mention that uh, what they prove is stronger in the following sense that they are uh, able to uh, consider uh, space homogeneous uh, noises. So the uh, stationary, the unique stationary measure they get is translation invariant, which is for physically um, the uh, natural uh, situation. Okay, this is a situation which, uh, for the moment, is open for the Navier-Stokes system. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so uh, how we, we will proceed? Uh, so, I will give uh, the a formulation of an abstract sufficient condition a little bit as uh, Sergei Kuksin and Armen Shirikan, but with less compactness properties, and then we will check one by one the properties of uh, this, uh, the, this, uh, the conditions in this theorem for our concrete example. Okay, so this was the first part. Now the second part, abstract, abstract result. Okay, so this is a version of, uh, of, uh, of a result that we saw in the previous two talks uh, by uh, Sergei Kuksin and Armen Shirikan. Um, so as in their case, in fact, uh, so we, we can look at this system, so we, at the restriction of the system, we can consider it as a random dynamical system, UK equals to S, UK minus one, eta k. Okay, the restriction to integer times of this system can be written in this form, where S is a mapping from from this product space to this. So H is exactly the the Navier-Stokes space here, and E will be uh, the space of controls here. Okay. And S will be the resolving operator of the Navier-Stokes system, which, which sends initial condition 
and control to the solution at time one, okay? But in, in, this, uh, in this section, we will forget about Navier-Stokes. We will formulate conditions in terms of S and eta k, which imply exponential mixing, okay? And then in the last third section, we will check the condition for Navier-Stokes. So what are the conditions? So, so there are uh, five conditions to, uh, in, the, in, in this theorem. So assume that the following five conditions are satisfied. So the first one is the is is the following that so s e s you see uh, so s from h times e to h is c two smooth and the derivative d u s u eta satisfies. So is of the form. So uh, d u s u eta is of the form c one plus c two u eta. So for any u in H and eta in the support of the, of, the, of, the, of the noise. I will define it uh, in the last condition. Okay, this is, this is going to be exactly the same uh, set as in the talks of uh, uh, Sergei Kuksin and Armin Shirikian. So there is a difference already at this level with respect to the previous talks be because S is not regularizing into a space V that is compactly injected, okay? And this is important because we do not have that property. So already here, we lost some compactness. But we recover, in fact, some compactness here because we will assume the following. So we will assume the following. So where? C to u eta from h to h is compact and c1, the norm of c1 is less than one, okay? So this decomposition means that the linear system can be decomposed into a sum of two operators. One is dissipative, the second one is compact, okay? So second condition. Okay, let me call this uh, random dynamical system one. Okay, there are two, okay. S, so um, the system S is asymptotically compact. So this means the following. So for any sequence of initial conditions, or any bounded of initial conditions U0N, in H, for any controls, uh, so for any times Ln integer times Ln and controls
controls eta 1 n eta ln n in the support of the noise, we have that the sequence sequence s ln zero n eta one n eta ln n plus is uh, uh, relatively compact. Okay, so this is a condition uh, that um, uh, is often used in the uh, in the theory of attractors uh, to construct attractors for PDEs in unbounded domains. Uh, uh, so we use uh, this property here in the in the stochastic um, setting. Then there are three conditions that we already met before. Uh, the first so of them is this approximate controllability. So the system one the system S is uh, uh, approximately controllable. To some point. You had. So this means the following. So for any compact for any compact H for any epsilon, there is an integer M and controls. eta 1, eta m, in the support of the noise, we are never allowed to choose a control outside the support of the noise, right? So we can choose controls and times such that, such that the solution of my system at time 1 m, okay, I need starting from u0, and taking controls eta 1, eta m is close to this final point, distinguished point you had for any initial data in H. So we are doing this uh, uniformly with respect to the initial condition in compacts. Okay? So for any compact of initial condition, we are able to find a uniform Time, of course, uh, of course, I need to put this uh, before, right? Uh, the controls depend on you, of course. Um, so I need to put it uh, after epsilon. No, uh, after m. And then fourth condition is approximate controllability of the linearization. Uh, so which means the following. Uh, so the image. of the linear operator so you take the derivative uh, with respect to the noise of our nonlinear resolving operator okay and then consider it as a mapping from control space to phase space the image of this linear operator is dense So is dense for any u in our space and any eta 
in here. Again, so as I... Exactly, exactly. For, for the Navier stocks, uh, this uh, follows from the dissipativity, but of course, uh, we may have uh, some uh, system with multiple equilibrium states where this is not ob obvious and can be uh, derived using uh, the geometry control tools of uh, Agrachev and Sarichev. But in our setting, this will be uh, immediately uh, following from. Uh, from the dissipativity. And this is one of the points where we use this uh, Poincaré hypothesis. Uh, of course. Uh, for the concrete, for our uh, concrete example of Navier stocks, this will not depend. We, we are going just to switch off the control, take zero, and wait. Okay? But in abstract level, it, it, it may depend. And the last one is uh, that uh, eta k is uh, decomposable. So uh, decomposability is uh, defined before, although in this abstract setting we can relax it a little bit, uh, but uh, so I, I stop here. So for, for this abstract result, as soon as you have these five conditions for your random dynamical system, then the system is exponentially okay, uh, exponentially mixing, again in the sense that uh, I gave before. So, <clears throat> so uh, where where do we use uh, where do we use uh, this uh, dissipativity? It is used, for example, here to check this condition, and it is also used to check this uh, asymptotic compactness property. We will see that. Okay. So, uh, how, why is this uh, condition of asymptotic compactness important? Uh, for this approach, this is be, uh, because uh, this asymptotic compactness implies that the, the, our trajectories live in compact. So this is important. Uh, in fact, so if uh, we define uh, the set of attainability for our system, so the set of attainability, so at time k first, so I, I take uh, initial conditions for some, from some set h, and I define, I define the set of attainability at time k as follows. So I take sk, initial condition u0, and controls u eta1, eta n. So this for any, for any initial condition in h, and any controls from the support, right? Then I consider the set AH, which is the union, union of these sets of attainability at time k. And then I take the union in, in the space H. And then I, comp I take the closure in the space H. So this is compact. Provided that the set of initial conditions is compact. Okay, so this allows to uh, to have compact fast space, which is very important because uh, when trajectory lives in compact, you apply the usual. Uh, bagalubov krylov argument uh, to show the existence of stationary measure. And if you work in a compact, you have many estimates that are uniform in space, and it is really a, 
convenient to work with. Of course, it, there is this uh, open problem uh, mentioned yesterday by Armin Shirikian. So it is a nice problem to understand what should be done when uh, the controls, uh, the, the noise are unbounded so that the fast pace is, uh, is no more compact. So, <coughs> okay, so now what we are going to do, we are going to, to check the conditions. So uh, I will uh, concentrate myself only on the first two conditions. Because the rest we already saw two times discussed, so, okay, I, I will only discuss what is new with respect to the previous works. Uh, so in the third part, we are checking the conditions of this theorem. So I will keep I will keep these two conditions. One, two. So checking this uh, first condition. Uh, so the first regularity part is, uh, is obvious. Uh, this is a usual, uh, usual uh, smoothness property, uh, dependence property from the right-hand side of the equation and initial condition. So uh, we will check uh, this, deco this decomposition. So the linearization, the linearization of the equation uh, is given, uh, so the linear equation is the following. D minus delta u, okay, u will stand for the solution of Navier-Stokes, u I will use w, plus b w u equals to zero, and there is an initial condition u zero that is equal to w zero. So more exactly what we are doing. As usual, Navier-Stokes system is uh, projected to the space of divergence-free vector fields, right? So that the system is written uh, in the uh, pressureless form, okay? We, it becomes in this uh, divergence-free uh, space uh, an evolution system, and then you linearize it, you get something like this, right? Where u is exactly the trajectory around which you linearize. Uh -huh. So in fact, this operator ds, dus, is nothing else but, so the value, the value of this, okay, let me, uh, so the value of this over some point W0 is exactly the solution of this at time one. Then we can write WT as a sum of W1T plus W2T, where so W1 is the solution of the following equation, W1 minus delta W1 equals to zero, and I have an initial condition. And then, in the second, I will have the remaining part of the equation. This is W2, delta W2, plus B WU equals to zero, and now initial condition will be zero, of course. So here, we do not have any dependence on the trajectory or control around which we linearize. So this is completely uniform. And using this uh, 
Poincaré uh, hypothesis and the dissipativity, we get immediately that W1 T squared is less than exponential minus T lambda W0 squared. Yes, yes, it is not important uh, the exact that it is, but it is the same lambda exactly in the Poincaré. It, it is positive con constant. So if I take t equal to one, t equal to one, I get exactly uh, exactly this. Okay, because this norm will be the exponential at time one. Yes. Yes, yes, because this, in fact, this u is the trajectory corresponding to initial condition u zero u and control eta okay we we denoted the, the same symbol okay it is usual stuff i'm sorry so uh, so u and eta are both encoded here okay so so here we have this uniform uh, estimate okay and then here we have compactness in fact why do we have compactness here so uh, here, this is a polynomial nonlinearity. Uh, w here is multiplied by a, a function that decays at infinity. So in fact, this resolving operator that sends W0, because here there is W0 in the definition of W. Okay? So the mapping that sends W0 to W2 at time one, this mapping is a composition of several mappings, which are all continuous, and one of them is compact. Which one? In the middle of this composition, there is a, a here a multiplication with something that uh, decays at infinity, and uh, it brings compactness uh, into, into, into this game here, into this uh, application. So here where we use uh, the structure of the nonlinearity, and in fact, here it is a quite general property which uh, still remains true for many uh, other polynomial nonlinearities. Navier Stokes here will not play essential role. This argument uh, remains uh, essentially true for uh, many other nonlinearities. Okay? So this is the verification of uh, the first, first property. Then, uh, what about this uh, second property? Checking condition two. So uh, here uh, we we uh, we use some formulas. Ah, so I need to take an arbitrary uh, sequence of initial data that is bounded. Okay. Uh, then I am taking uh, a sequence of times, controls in the compact, and I need to show that these uh, solutions at time ln are relatively compact. Okay? From? This is linear. This is linear. And the other condition is nonlinear, so it is uh, it, it doesn't follow. At, at, so uh, uh, at least what I'm going to do it is not based on this. Uh, it, it uses the really the nonlinear equation. Um, so how how we proceed? So we denote. Let us discuss it uh, after. So, because the, the argument uh, here, so uh, is already not complicated. Okay, so we are going just multiply the equation, and integrate and uh, pass to the limit. So let us do this. Uh, so v k is this sequence s ln u zero n eta one n eta ln N. So passing to a subsequence, if necessary, I can assume a lot of uh, convergences. So w what type of convergence? 
I can assume that the initial conditions converge weakly in H uh, because this is bounded. Then I can assume that eta E N converges strongly to eta E. Strongly in E. Okay. And moreover, I can assume that V K converges weakly because it because of the dissipativity, this will be a bounded sequence, so I can extract a weakly convergent subsequence, W. Okay, I have these three, three inequality, so, so these three limits. So um, as a consequence of this weak convergence, we immediately have that W, the norm of W is less or equal to lim inf, so at n goes to infinity of uh, uh, So uh, why I denote it by k, I don't know. And it is n. So I pass to the limit, and I have this inequality, right? What I need to do is to prove, so go, prove that lim sup as n goes to infinity, of uh, Vn is less than W, the norm of W. If you are able to do this, you have convergence uh, of the norm so that you have convergence strongly. And all this uh, modulo uh, subsequence, okay? Uh, uh. So I took some subsequence, I denoted the same symbol, uh, all the sequences. So now uh, uh, I'm going uh, to, to check uh, this, that lim sup satisfies. Uh, uh, satisfies this inequality. So we consider uh, a sequence with delay S L N minus M zero N eta one Eta n, ln minus m. I take any integer m. So then I use uh, a diagonal argument to show that again passing to a subsequence, but denoting with same symbols everything, we can converge weakly to some limit w m as n goes to infinity. Of course, this comes again from the boundedness. I can extract a subsequence so that we have this, uh, this limit. So what is the consequence of this, of this? So if we denote this sequence WNM, then so SM of WNM with controls eta one so more precisely uh, it is uh, so uh, okay let us write it like this but it depends on m okay So this equals to W. So what is this? In fact, uh, we know that these initial conditions converge weakly. Okay. Then I use uh, continuous dependence uh, in uh, weak topology from the with respect to the initial condition and strong topology with respect to the controls, I can pass to the limit and get here the same W as here that can be written as follows for any M. Uh, 
uh, of course, I'm taking the limit here, so there is no n. Wn is this. Wn is this. Wn is this. Because this is the initial conditions that converge to this limit. The, the m remaining controls, m remaining controls that are not included there, converge to some limit that I call this, this, this. And I put sm here. So this is equal to w. Equal. It is m, of course. OK, thank you. <laughs> OK, so great. So uh, what we do next is just applying some energy equality uh, for the Navier-Stokes uh, equation. Uh, we apply the following uh, equality. So w squared equals to exponential minus uh, lambda m wm which is the w here, squared, plus 2 integral 0m exponential minus lambda m minus s. So M S M S. I will define all these quantities in a minute. So I'm then there is this this norm. So what is this? So in fact, you just take the scalar product of equation equation with initial condition W M and Eta m is the sequence of, is the function formed by sequence of controls eta 1 m, eta m n. On the 0, 1, it is this. On the 1, 2, it is eta 2 m, etc. On the last interval, it is eta m. So this is a uh, step function, simply. And this is the associated solution. So the value of the solution at the initial time is this. At the final time, is this. So this is just what you get by taking the scalar product and using a Duhamel formula, okay? Then we do the same, exactly the same for, so let me, let me write here, no, so that I'm close. So I do the same for, for the, the other trajectory and then I pass to the limit. So I need to specify what is this. This is exactly the square of H1 norm minus lambda over 2, the L2 norm. So because of, because of the Poincaré inequality, this is a norm, uh, this is a square of a norm, um, <laughs> uh, which is equivalent to the norm of H1. And this is important, uh, in, we will see in a minute. So I rewrite a similar uh, equality for the other trajectory. So I'm almost done. So what is this? This is the same energy equality uh, written for the solution starting from this point and corresponding to, uh, to our controls here, okay, eta uh, nm, okay, 
which starts from, from this, and at time m, it is here. Next, we pass to the limit as uh, n goes to infinity. What happens? What happens? Uh, this term goes, uh, goes to this term. Okay. The, so here, you use the weak convergence in the H1 space. You use the equivalence of this norm to the usual norm of uh, H1. And you notice that here, there is a minus. Okay. When you pass to lim inf, because of this minus, it becomes lim sup. Okay. And so when you pass to the limit, and you, you notice that m is arbitrary. So, and this is bounded, so it goes away, and you get exactly what uh, you were looking for. This is lim sup, lim sup, as uh, n goes to infinity of vn, which is less than uh, the w. Okay, so you pass to the limit, you l use these two equalities, and it is important that the sign here changed. Okay? And you get uh, this property. Again, uh, again, we used Navier-Stokes, uh, only one property uh, in some sense uh, from the two properties from the Navier-Stokes. The nonlinearity is conservative because when you, you consider energy uh, equality, there is no nonlinearity, so it is uh, convenient. And then the dependence of the solution weakly in the initial condition and strongly in the control. And this is, again, a very uh, usual properties for, for PDs. Okay. So this, this is what I wanted to, uh, to, to tell you. Thank you very much.